A very good morning, everyone. So the panel that we are running right now is the new paradigm for capital markets. So what is a new paradigm? Uh, the definition is that it's a completely new logical way to assess a situation. Um, a new paradigm for an industry is when you change the rules of the game. Uh, it's a completely different economic rules and factors that drive the industry. So uh, when I was invited to run this panel, uh, the first thought that came to my mind is, um, what will kickstart this new paradigm? What is, how is it going to uh, happen? And the first thought that came to my mind was by disruption. So then I was wondering, um, okay, what did Uber do to commuting, you know? What did Amazon do to retailing? What did Airbnb do to the hotel industry? So uh, that is what created the new paradigm. And how about the financial industry? So having covering banks for many years now, uh, you know, look at the new digital banks. They are changing the way we are doing banking completely. So what is it in the capital markets industry that will completely change the rules of the game, that will change the way companies raise money, that will change the way uh, people invest, that will possibly even change the way we uh, value companies and investments. So I'm really fortunate to have the industry leaders, our regulators, and this is exactly the panel that all of you need to be hearing from them on, right? Like, where, which direction are we headed in? So I would really like to start uh, with uh, this question, like what are you seeing from your lens and from your positions? How are the rules of the game changing? How is the landscape changing? Uh, maybe I can start with you, uh, Thank, thank you, good morning and sabati uh, My name is Rinvadi, as you said, a new paradigm. Since I've been in the office for four months, I think I bring, I bring the new lens new lens to the SEC and then to the uh, other stakeholder here. I think uh, everybody have to recognize the fact that, uh, as you mentioned, this is a new paradigm, a new ecosystem. And of course, the digital uh, keep coming and keep bringing you to think about the new thing. Uh, like the uh, Minister of Finance, he mentioned about transformation. I think for all uh, organizations need to be aware of that. But first of all, I have to express my sincere thanks to Stock Exchange to invite me to share some thought. Uh, I think that for the regulator, I, I want to make sure to you uh, that the SEC we play a dual role, a two-pronged approach. Being a facilitator together with the regulator is a matter of uh, each time how we balance or strike a proper balance on that. I want to be sure to you all that we not play a role of the regulator only. Okay, uh, innovator, developer, and facilitator. And uh, right now, so uh, we're so lucky um, uh, with the four months of my terms here. Uh, and then I think that we uh, attach to the national uh, strategy plan of the government. It's the first time that I ask all my colleagues, uh, whatever you want to do the job, you have to remind yourself uh, what you try to achieve within the six a key strategy of the country. Definitely for the SEC in the capital market and financial industry, for sure, uh, we need to be, uh, make sure that the economy in Thailand be competitive, like Minister of uh, Finance mentioned, like that. And second of all, so lucky to, uh, to have the capital market development plan. This is four year plan. They try to uh, aim for four key objectives. First, accessibility. Second is about connectivity. Third is about competitiveness. And third, sustainability. fourth, sustainability. So that, I think that the new lens of my, uh, together with a good team at the SEC and with the support of the board commissioner, uh, is how to achieve these four key objectives uh, from, uh, from now on. You know, but uh, as I said, uh, we have to be, uh, make sure that we be on ground. You know, and within next month, uh, my team and I, uh, we look into uh, whatever you call uh, the new policy for next year. But if you, you want to hear more on this, I think that uh, within the uh, past four months, uh, I put up the 10 agenda. If my colleague, could you please? See, I, I won't go uh, into detail on that. This is all new, this is all new, you know. Uh, for sure, the enhancing the investor protection, this is a key. 
uh, we want to make sure that uh, new investment opportunity come along, but uh, investors need to be well aware and make sure they can uh, understand the risk profile of each product. And also, we be, as the first time, going up country together with uh, all the CLMV country and the ASEAN and also and other overseas country. We want to uh, make sure every Thai business can tap in the capital market widely, widely. And also, we want to bring the new lens of eye uh, to, in, uh, to include uh, all the potential Thai investors together with foreign investors. And uh, of this, I think that uh, for adopting digital transformation, uh, you know what, the first thing that I do at the SEC on the very few uh, day out of my position, I asked the board commissioner to have the uh, new uh, champion of the digital transformation person yes. as assistant secretary yeah. general. Without that, we could not uh, uh, proceed yeah. uh, with the transformation. Yeah. Thank I you. think that's a very key point, and we'll discuss that a little bit more in detail as well. I think Asian regulators have really been at the forefront of being more facilitators rather than just regulators, and that's a very valid point raised by Khun uh, Dr. Pakon, like, what, how do you see uh, the capital markets' new paradigm shaping Certainly. up? Um, in my opinion, I think there are three major trends that certainly will change the rule of the game and will introduce us to the new paradigm. The first thing is the global connectivity and the volatility that come with it. You will notice that nowadays you will see this as a new norm of the world capital market. So we have to adapt to that. Secondly, we start to see the change of the behavior of the fundraiser and the investor. Let's start from the fundraiser side. Now there are so many ways that the fundraiser can get the money from the market or from the direct to from the, the, the those who have the supply of fund. And also on the investor side, we start to see that investor become more online centric, technology enabled, and also they start to investing in theme, thematic investment. For example, like the uh, for the retirement or for the sustainability. Those are the things that has changed. The lastly, the technology disruption, the artificial intelligence, the distributed ledger technology, and the big data analytics. These things will certainly change the way that uh, people will invest and do the fundraising. It's up to us on how to make this uh, technology benefit to all. So that's all the trend that I see. So that's, that's a very, very interesting point. So I actually want to get a view from the audience uh, right now. and. Uh, uh, this is the time you need to raise your voice on this thing. Um, do you see that the public equity may not be the most relied source for funding going forward? Do you see uh, private funding sources emerge as uh, increase in importance as new companies try to raise money? Can I see a show of hands? How many people think public equity is losing the charm that it had previously? I really need more uh, engagement. Okay, how many of you think it isn't losing its charm? Okay, the rest of the audience is neutral. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. So PwC did a survey and 70% respondents actually thought that public equity may not be the most viable form of funding because there is increasingly more um, avenues and flexibility in private funding structures, be it through venture capitalists, be it through private equity, and the kind of flexibility that brings around for especially the new economy companies, the startups, that is something that people are already starting to wonder about, which brings to my next point. Kun Tevin, you are the closest to the new economy companies, right, from the startups perspective. How do you think they are changing uh, the new capital markets paradigm? Thank you, Diksha. Uh, uh, good morning, I think everyone. Uh, pleased to be here. Uh, in the changing paradigm uh, that you're talking about, uh, from the viewpoint of the business, I think we changing from the conventional business model into the new model of startup uh, disruptive technology disrupt disruption on the business model. Uh, we changing from the conventional uh, feasibility study on looking at investment with the long-term cash flow, 
with IRR with NPV to make our investment decision into looking at the the risk taking and, and maybe a shorter life of the enterprise, uh, which is being going to be disrupted uh, very soon. Uh, we look we change from looking at productivity improvement efficiency into looking at the innovation and variety. Uh, so that that means that the uh, the feed in of the uh, enterprise into the new uh, investment system will change from conventional totally into the new area. And that brings to, uh, up the second point in the changing of the uh, funding method. Uh, we used to look at equity, we used to look at uh, debt or loan uh, separately. Uh, now I think uh, with the, the, high, the new model of higher risk, uh, maybe a model of partnership combination of loans and, and equity and convertible in the, at the end would be something that might come in more and more into the new uh, funding mechanism uh, where the new partners will share risk and share the rewards after the, the, the business is successful. And, uh, and not just the fundings, the startup require more than just the, the money. I think uh, most of them are entrepreneur, young inventors, and they would need a lot of uh, support in terms of uh, marketing, in terms of uh, coaching, mentoring. So a uh, partnership model would be something that we are looking at. So the role of funds like corporate venture capital or venture capital, private equities, uh, that angel funds will come into, into play uh, more and more. And lastly, I think the, with the new technology, it allows the direct relationship between the, uh, the enterprise and the investors. Uh, some will still go through the market, the main market as we know, uh, but of course there are already a lot of direct uh, investment into the enterprise uh, using the, the information in the public area. And I think that has displayed the uh, live, L-I-V-E, live uh, uh, platform that would be something like a, a virtual pitching for the startup and that would allow the in, interested in investor to, to consider the investment and start the discussion directly with the startups. So those are the changing paradigm for the investment arena for the new, new tech, new business, new startups. That's a very fascinating observation if you've paid attention. So investing is no longer just sharing equity or just sharing risks. It's also about sharing expertise and what you pointed out around angel investors, how they bring expertise to the table, how they um, uh, share past experiences into new business models. So th there is, there is an, another dimension added to the investing uh, practice by itself. Um, so, I mean, I wanted to talk a little bit more around what are the challenges uh, for startup companies to really raise funds and, you know, that, that the regulatory burden, uh, the costs of going public, like those sort of factors also are playing an increasingly important role. Uh, so, just moving on to the funding side and the financing of uh, the smaller companies, including the SMEs. Uh, so, uh, for Thailand particularly, SMEs are a very, very critical part of the economy, right? About 42% of the GDP, 14 million job creator. So, grooming and growing this segment is really important for Thailand's success. Uh, and recently, I think Thailand has taken charge on promoting its startup economy too. So, Kundrunvadi, I really want to hear your thoughts. What is the SEC's role in supporting uh, startups and SMEs? Thank, thank you. Uh, can I just show you... Uh, PowerPoint of the ecosystem of SME. This is the, thanks to my colleague who uh, prepared a very nice uh, presentation. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, that uh, right now the SME is an uh, engine of the development, engine of economy. I think that we share this characteristic worldwide. You know, uh, right now there are about uh, three million apps uh, hiring about fourteen million workforce. And if you can look at the, the uh, contribution to the economy, the previous slide, please, uh, at the moment is about 40 something, right? Uh, and then we aim to have even higher than that. Uh, as I said, that uh, we have to uh, look a uh, broader picture. Uh, the question that I've been asking my colleague uh, in the office, uh, luckily before I come, uh, the, uh, the previous SEC uh, 
Secretary General, he already proposed that the board commissioner have a crowdfunding, crowdfunding on equity, uh, whereas the life come along. Uh, but again, that's uh, the topics of all or nothing. If you cannot raise the amount as to prescribe, it means collapse, you know. And we, we, we are working on, on that uh, uh, actively on this, you know, not many projects at the moment. Uh, later, a month after I, come, uh, I came, there is a, a debt crowdfunding, right? And then right now we, we talk about the crowdfunding all. But the question is how the small, medium enterprise uh, at the early stage or even the uh, sometimes have some track record could tap in, talking about the real sector things, real sector SME together with venture capital and then private equity, you know. Um, as I mentioned to you that we look, have to look things new, you know. Uh, we are right now uh, described or de uh, classified into two areas, uh, qualitative things and quantitative things. What SEC can do most is about the support or like Kun Tevin mentioned about mentoring. Uh, we are looking to the qualitative uh, because you know, uh, uh, offer shares to the stock of the capital market, there's some cost associated with. Uh, the FA things, the accountant things, and so on and so forth. Luckily, I want to uh, inform you all here, the participant, that the uh, SME in Thailand, there are uh, have uh, one accounting report already. <laughs> this is a uh, work together with the OSMAP, you know, and also the revenue department under the previous government policy and the uh, present government policy already. So that is very more easy for the SME to tap into the capital market, you know. Uh, as I mentioned to you that uh, we are working on uh, the qualitative um, want to make sure what if they have interest to come in, uh, it's not too costly. And sometimes we need to have like uh, incentive package to them too, you know, and then we are working on that because uh, I have whatever to tell you, this is our draft plan. Uh, I have to propose to the board of commissioner uh, for approval first. Without that, I perhaps uh, have to leave the office very soon <laughs> because this is a, a proposed plan. And also, we work together with uh, Dr. Pagon and his team uh, for the quantitative things, you know. We want to make sure that uh, Angel or very uh, fresh start company could easily tap into, you know. It's a matter that how could we, what you call, uh, demand and supply uh, come together. Uh, we see a lot of progress can, can be done here. Uh, hopefully that by next month or so, uh, Thai SEC could announce something to you, to your audience here. And then uh, as the topic today is a new opportunity, um, please uh, wait for a while. The opportunity come along to you every day. You know, uh, uh, As I said, we want to be a facilitator on this. Uh, want to make sure that uh, we are now on ground and be here about the need of SME to tap in. So I think the audience here will definitely uh, support that initiative. And I mean, given the rise in household wealth and investable uh, money, uh, I think we need more and more avenues, right? And definitely Asia is a more capital starved uh, region. And then on the other end, we have this uh, incremental increase in wealth. So there's definitely a supply demand match that uh, I can see here. Uh, I mean, if you look at what China did with P2P, it may be uh, a little bit of a different model because they let it grow and then the regulator stepped in. In this case, you're already thinking preemptively about it. So that's a very encouraging move by itself. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, Dr. Pakon, what is the SET doing to support the sure. startups? Um, on our side, uh, I would say that SET can do more because in the past, uh, when we look at the funding of the listed company in Thailand, most of the company size that place fund from the stock market would be a rather big or not so small company. But nowadays, when you look at the, this weak spot of the, the capital market, how can we get the funding to the smaller company? This is the issue that we have been looking on. That's why we come up with a live platform. However, a platform is just one of the factor that we need. How can we get the startup people to become entrepreneur and also would be able to do like the pitching, the meeting and become like a big company? 
it's so expensive for the smaller company to invest in this kind of thing. So that's why we come with the live platform and also the training and also the business support so that the startup can utilize all these functions that the SET has working with other partners like the bank or the private and public organization to provide this kind of platform, technology, education, and mentorship. So these are the things that SET has been trying to do. However, it's just at the beginning. We believe that we would be able to do more of this kind of thing in the future. Kun uh, Tevin, the regulators are bringing in full support. So what do you think will it take for the first Thai unicorn to come about? Uh, I think it takes uh, magic. Uh, I gave it a lot of thought to answer this question to you. So it, it needs magic, but we can, we can bring together the magicians to make that magic. And that's why uh, we're now creating an uh, entity called InnoSpace Thailand, or sometimes referred to, to as the Cyberport Thailand, so uh, similar to the then. Hong Kong Cyberport. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's an organization where we put together the, the investment from the private sector, uh, supported by the government with the collaboration with the academic sector, uh, to create a national platform for ecosystem that will uh, allow uh, the increase in the number of startups and also to enhance their quality. And that was a key to, to make that magic uh, to, in order to, to uh, develop a unicorn or to breed a unicorn. You do need a lot, a lot, a lot of startups. And uh, the three magicians uh, we are talking about is the first the private sector uh, that they provide the, the pain point for uh, as a as a demand for the for the startups uh, they provide the coaching the mentoring uh, the experience uh, to the startup and they also provide the market uh, recommendation and lastly they provide the fundings uh, whether directly as a partners with the startup or whether through the uh, the mechanism in the in the market uh, so and more startups better quality startups but correct. what about scale so if you see like what china and india correct. have seen they have the big market which brings a bigger testing ground which builds which allows for scale so right. how do you think thai startups can okay. leapfrog and become regional players uh, so the role of the business itself is not just to look at the market in thailand I think large corporates also have their market uh, in other countries as well. And together with the, uh, the uh, opportunity for collaboration with the international agency, similar to the InnoSpace Thailand, uh, at the moment we have uh, understanding with uh, Hong Kong Cyberport. Uh, we are going to sign another understanding with Korea, Kotra. And also we're looking at the cooperation with Israel uh, uh, innovation agency as well, and, and many more. So I think uh, it's, uh, it's a new world of uh, bringing the startup together. Uh, I'm sure that the startup in other countries would also like to tap into the Thai market, and we would provide the Thai startup to match with them at the same time to work in their market as well. So that is one area where the private sector can help. Uh, the government sector, of course, the second magicians, we also have to uh, facilitate this ecosystem that bring together all the necessary uh, factors. Uh, they would be looking at eliminating all the constraints in terms of the regulatory uh, uh, limitation to, to allow the startup to grow and to, to come in. We've got um, commitment from Khun Junwadi already. So yes. she's pushing your agenda yes. high on the radar, I'm very so. pleased to hear the presentation of both <laughs> Rinwadi and Dr. Park on because that it helps, it gives a lot of more confidence to the startup in Thailand. And I think the third magician is also very important the academic sector, the uh, researcher, they will provide the knowledge, the technology, uh, the tools for the startup to, to uh, bring their ideas into reality. Uh, so uh, those are the, 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 the magicians that they are bringing together and as part of the uh, InnoSpace Thailand, uh, you see on the list there, uh, I think this is just initial list that uh, become the partners of InnoSpace Thailand to, to help bring together their individual ecosystem into the national platform. 
I think the next tagline for InnoSpace is going to be, let's make magic. That, that is an appropriate tagline going forward. Can, can I just add to, yeah, sure. to the, uh, uh, Mr. Tevin? I think that one thing that uh, whatever you're talking about, the new opportunity, you have to be ensured that regulatory platform is uh, uh, will fit with that. Uh, one thing that uh, right now, the, our office working together with the Ministry of Commerce, the Business uh, Development Department, uh, at the moment, the civil court do not allow you to offer the share of ex uh, to, uh, to new uh, investor, only the existing shareholder. So that, uh, please uh, be sure that, I mean, we are working together uh, with uh, the related uh, authority because uh, I think that whatever that we are aware of the, the, the burden of struggle, uh, that is the, uh, the, uh, what the, the champion already, you know. It's just a matter that how uh, we are now propose the law amendment on this so that if it's a fry, you know, and then uh, the company, this uh, a small company can uh, distribute share uh, to our new investor. Just, just leave this matter with the authority yeah. <laughs> on the, the second part that uh, Mr. Tevin mentioned about magician, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important from a regulatory lens as well to provide new innovative structures to address some of these issues, right? So just for example, last year, Hong Kong introduced dual shares, which was only available in the US at the moment, right? So that like one of the big concerns for promoters is they lose control over the company as they go public. So this is, these are the small steps that we can see that affect how your startup economy flourishes and grows. Um, I want to quickly move on to the next section, which is around sustainability. Um, so there is an increasing demand for sustainable investing products globally and particularly stemming from Europe. Uh, the studies show that younger population, the millennials, are really interested in uh, those kind of products. So, Kunjun uh, Vadi, I think SEC has been really advocating responsible investing and green financing. So, uh, I want to hear your thoughts on how this is going to evolve. Thank you. And I want to assure to you that this is going to be our flagship, you know, flagship uh, of our commitment to the society and to the world. Um, uh, for the ESG, uh, I think that we take a three approach, regulatory discipline, uh, self-discipline, and market force. Uh, the SEC have been working very hard on, on this matter and have uh, accomplished uh, various uh, uh, projects together with the support of stakeholders. We already introduced the CG code, as you may know, and lately we introduced the I code uh, for the part of the demand side, investment governance code. Uh, I think that it is uh, put uh, well in place that everyone uh, will aware of the need to make uh, society become uh, uh, sustainable uh, by recognizing the importance of the environment, society, and the governance. Uh, uh, last few weeks, uh, the permanent secretary of Minister of Finance, he is a chairperson of the government pension fund. Uh, we were there together with, with the mutual fund companies and then also big institutional investors like life insurance. Uh, about 32 companies signed MOU on the so-called negative list. You know, this is quite an uh, achievement of the Thai market in terms of the demand side because uh, they want to make sure whatever investment they put in, that, that company needs to uh, recognize the, the importance of the, these three ESG. For the Thai SEC, uh, we are right now upscaling that, you know. Um, the past three months, uh, uh, we already signed MOU with the so-called uh, National Commission of Human Rights. We now encourage uh, our listed company to aware the need of comply with UN guiding principle on business and human rights. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is not, to me, it's not a costly uh, uh, endeavor at all because it's talking about management your risks, you know. I, I see the point of human rights as a management of the risks of each company so that uh, we assure that uh, we are working on that and for the green bond, uh, the, uh, also uh, in our office, we already uh, do and uh, accommodate 
the issuance of that by lowering or uh, exempting the filing fee. And right now, we are working on another important, as Minister of Finance mentioned uh, early in the morning, about the social enterprise. Uh, we will soon, uh, actually, we already at the Board of Commission uh, of SEC already approved in principle uh, to issue any bonds or whatever instrument that in line or object, uh, meet objective of social enterprise. And uh, tomorrow, uh, next week, I think that I will uh, have the meeting amongst uh, the Capital Market Development Board to put into detail. And on the 16th, uh, the Dr. Gopsak uh, will also uh, have the meeting uh, a seminar on about how the capital market in Thailand would accommodate the social enterprise uh, activity. Thank you. So I think globally, um, there is still a lot of questions around what exactly does ESG mean? Like people have different benchmarks, different ways of looking. Uh, but what I've been uh, hearing across the spectrum is the starting point is basically elimination. So not investing in companies which are sure shot in violation of basic ESG thought processes, right? So that's a very interesting, um, uh, I mean, kicks, at least get the process kick-started, right? And then the bigger funds will start including sustainability as part of their investment regimes, not as separate funds. Uh, but uh, I think, Dr. Pakon, I really wanted to come to you at this point. So the SET won the UN Award for Sustainable Exchange, right? Um, can you please share, like, how does your organization thinking about sustainability? Sure, thank you. Um, for us at the SET, we truly believe that the sustainability is a value proposition, not only just for the investor, but for also our listed company. Why? When you look back since our Asian financial crisis, you remember in 1997, the biggest issue that the investor had doubt on the Thai capital market would be that how can all this information that released from the company be trustable. At that time, what we did, we setting up the corporate governance center and also working with the central bank and the SEC to come up with the institution of the director so that the corporate governance issue would be enforced and support by the total uh, community. And since then, that was 1999. Since then, what we have been doing is that we are trying to promote the corporate social responsibility. We are trying to promote the environmental, social, and governance issue. And then we recognize that all these things that we have been doing actually benefit the listed company in a way that now they can show that once they incorporate this concept into their strategy of the business, their profitability can be sustainable. So that's why I mentioned that. Uh, in order to integrate that this ESG or sustainability thing to the company strategy is so important, it has to be naturally. And also on the other side, on the demand side, how can we encourage or how can we incentivize the investor to value this sustainability? This is the thing that we have been working on. We're working with our uh, intermediary asset management company, uh, our security company to come up with a product that reflects the ability for the company or the product that show sustainability concept. For example, we come up with a thing called the Thailand Sustainability Index. And also, we are working with other index provider like Dow Jones, come up with the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. And one thing that I would like to report to you all, the number of the Thai listed company that has been added to this DJSI has been the biggest number in Southeast Asia, and it has been quite like this for during the past five years. So you can see that nowadays the company, the listed company, the investor, and the intermediary in Thailand actually value this sustainability thing, and not just only in the form or the reporting purpose, but also in showing how sustainable that they can provide the profitability.
That's, I mean, if you think about it, it's a very rational thought process. I'm really surprised how come not a lot of other uh, regulators seem to uh, understand the criticality of this. So climate change is no longer a 20 years down the road problem, right? The costs are real. So as both the regulators here have pointed out, it's not like you're doing a favor by being more sustainable. It's because these are going to become real costs for businesses going forward. Uh, I mean, just imagine a day where you don't have water in Bangkok. How will that day look like? And if you think that's like really far from reality, well, it's not. If you look at what happened in Cape Town, if you heard what happened in Chennai, these are both coastal areas and water ran out. So uh, businesses having to pay for water, what will that do to the economics of a lot of industries, right? So these are real costs. And I think assimilating that as part of your sustainability strategy is becoming increasingly important. Um, I actually wanted to move on quickly to the next uh, p part, and I'm sure a lot of uh, my friends here are interested in that. Um, what are the new investment opportunities that are going to come about in this new paradigm? So I'll actually start with you, Kunt Evan. Um, what are the sectors that the Thai startups are actually finding favor with? Where do you see more companies, more issuances coming out of? Okay. Uh, I, I would uh, refer to the... the uh, national strategy, the Thailand 4.0, which identified the Eastern Economic Corridor as part of the focus area for supporting, promoting the new industry as well as the uh, existing industries. And you see on the, the slides that there are five existing industries uh, which need to be modified a little bit. For example, the next generation automotive, uh, maybe a transformation uh, more and more from the uh, uh, internal combustion engine into the, the electric vehicles, the uh, uh, smart electronics that would allow the, the smart city livings, the uh, medical and wellness uh, tourism, uh, increase the level of the tourism into the next uh, higher value uh, business. Agriculture and biotechnology, this is built based on the, the fundamental strength of Thailand, which is the agriculture and the food for the future, also built on the strength of the uh, uh, Thai foods and uh, the new S curve industries also built on top of the existing ones the digital technology, the robotics, medical hub, aviation, and logistics, uh, taking advantage of the, the geographic location of Thailand, biofuels and biochemicals, also the value creation uh, on top of the agriculture. So, those are the, the key themes uh, under the EEC. Now, for the uh, uh, on the next slide, I'll show you the three pillars that InnoSpace uh, put together uh, three areas out of those uh, 10 industries. The first one is the biotechnology, which integrates the agricultural technology, uh, food technology, and bioeconomy. And those are the areas where the startups uh, have not done a lot of work on yet. The research has been done, uh, but maybe not as much as we should. So that would be one area that in our space, Thailand would be promoting the, the research work and the startup. The second area is the medical technology and the health technology. I think this is the area where there has been some, some research done, uh, not getting into the, the, the startup business in the entrepreneur yet. Uh, but we'll do our best to support the early stage of the startup and then hopefully there'll, there'll be some uh, interested investors to come in and help uh, scaling it up to the, the next stage. And the third area, this is very the, an attractive area, which is the, the, all the digital robotic AIs, IoT, uh, to increase the, the performance of the existing industries. We call it Industry 4.0. Uh, this is already in place. There are a lot of work uh, ongoing, a lot of uh, interested uh, venture capital, corporate venture capital that would be interested to, to invest in. Uh, what InnoSpace is doing is that uh, we would bridge, link all the ecosystem among the, the private companies, corporate venture capitals. We bring together the, the Thailand uh, Venture Capitals Club and also the Angel Funds Club and uh, use the strength of each one to, to create the alignment, the synergy, and hopefully filling some gaps in the area where no one has been looking at. Uh, so those, those are the opportunity for the, the, Thai, the startup in Thailand. So it's interesting. I mean, Thailand is trying to find its own niche and strengths and kind of build on it as opposed to just 
following the bandwagon on technology startups, right? That's, that's quite refreshing. Um, Dr. Parkon, if I may ask you this, about 46% companies in Thailand have revenues from overseas uh, sources, right? Uh, do you think this is a lasting trend? And since you mentioned theme-based investing, can we look at a theme for Thai companies as an exposure to the CMLV, uh, the, the, the region itself? Uh, what are your thoughts around okay. that? I think at the moment, when you look at where to invest and what to invest, I would say that it's so difficult to analyze given that there are so many external uncertainties. So at least one of the investment theme that at the South Asian of Thailand, we have been trying to propose uh, to the investor is that what would be the strength of the country? What are the strength of Thai economy? First of all, let's say when you look at the strength of the Thai economy, our hospitality, well-being sector, which include something like tourism, healthcare, transportation, food and beverage, commerce, agriculture and fashion. These are the strength of the economy. That's why we come up with the concept well-being economy. And when you look at Thailand as a well-being economy, actually we can link this well-being economy to our regional uh, country, Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam. We have quite a similar culture and similar strength. So in the future, this would be one of the area that we certainly would like to push as an investment theme. Secondly, like you just mentioned, when you look at the Thai listed company nowadays, roughly 140, 150 Thai company has a business abroad in CLMV country, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam, and more than 250 company investing in ASEAN. So you can see that Thai company actually at the moment are global companies. They are not just raising funds to invest in Thailand anymore, but they are starting to invest overseas. You heard the name of CP. You heard the name of like Thai Union, Minor Group. These are the companies that are actually expanding globally. So this is the second part. How can we have a theme on the economic exposure, not just in the CLMV region, ASEAN region, or European, Australia, or North America? So we come up with the economy exposure index. So you can see that we start to provide more and more product from the Thai, Thai market. Thirdly, I just mentioned to you, Sustainability is a strength of the Thai listed company. So we provide a product called Thailand Sustainability Index portfolio so that investors who are interested in a company who has been employ uh, employing and embracing this kind of practice can invest in a group of companies that have been performing very well comparing to the market. And lastly, when Kun uh, Tevin mentioned about a lot of infrastructure investment, what can I do to participate in this kind of investment? At the moment, when you look into the Thai exchange, there are at least five products that is an infrastructure fund project. And in the future, we totally believe that in the region that we will demand a lot of infrastructure investment, we will have more and more product in the infrastructure investment in our market. So you can see that at least I told you about four theme of the investment in the Thai market already. That's very interesting and I think I vouch for that uh, ideology and theme based investing the way it's picking up as well because we've been working on theme baskets as well like from a global viewpoint what are the 5G um, exposed companies and that is finding a lot of favor with investors so that the, the theme resonates and then you can kind of pick up the basket and run with. Uh, Dr. Pakon, if I have you um, with me, just one more uh, quick follow up on uh, the whole tech disruption. You are literally at the forefront leading the charge with how technology is changing the way we are running things, right? Uh, could you just speak with us uh, about some of the uh, initiatives very quickly, like what are you doing using the new technologies like blockchain or sure. how algo trading is impacting markets? Um, I would say this question actually relates to both ACC and the startup side. When you look at the technology um, benefit, you can use technology to enhance the efficiency of what we, you have been doing. And also, how, how can we utilize the new technology in offering new type of product? Let me start on the efficiency first. In the past, for example, uh, when investors in Thailand would like to invest in the mutual fund, what they normally do is going to the bank and investing in the mutual fund that run by the sub, uh, subsidiary of the bank. However, using uh, technology at the exchange, now we provide a mutual fund platform. It's a centralized mutual fund platform that 
linking the selling agent to the asset management company. So more options. Exactly. Now. And now, when the investor want to buy any mutual fund from any provider, they can just connect to the online trading platform and investing in the fund that they want. And in the future, this service will not only provide for the local product, it will provide all the international product for those who link to this fund platform. This is an example of how technology can enhance the market efficiency. On the other side, let's think about the um, application of distributed ledger technology or the new AI and uh, thing that we can use. In the future, let's say, suppose that the exchange come up with a new function, security tokenization. Let's say the trading that use the uh, blockchain technology or the custodian that maybe we help it to be able to perform both the cash function and security function on any type of asset. So this is the thing that in the future, like Kun Tevin mentioned, how can the fundraiser connect to the fund provider directly? These are the things that in my opinion, certainly not only the exchange, but the exchange with the community, the, the, our intermediary like the asset management company or the security company or the custodian bank, how can we change our function and stay and live and prosper in this type of new eco ecosystem? That would be the issue that technology will support our development in the future. Um, I think if you notice, this is a very interesting phase uh, in capital markets, right? Markets... Uh, if you look at the brokers, the banks, they are struggling from a profitability perspective given that, you know, technology removes some of the inefficiencies. But if you look at a more proactive approach in terms of using technology to increase the share of the pie rather than just the distribution of the pie, I think that is what the story that Dr. Pakon is sharing about. You can increase the pie by using technology, by increasing access, by bringing in more people. And I think the tagline also says it all, like make capital markets work for everyone. Uh, and I mean, just the pace at which things are changing, Khun uh, they are not making it easier for you. Huh? Life is becoming increasingly more difficult as a regulator. So how do you think this technology uh, is kind of affecting? Is it, uh, are you getting sleepless nights given how things are? I can sleep uh, as usual. Uh, as a matter of fact, that uh, with my previous uh, uh, record before I come into the SEC, I've been transformed uh, the one of the civil uh, uh, service de department of the legal enforcement to be digital transformation organization already. And by 1st October this year, we announced paperless. I think that uh, technology is part of uh, essential tools to you. It's a matter that how would you use it wisely, you know. But before I just uh, uh, answer to you this, may I just go back to Kun Pagon, Dr. Pagon about CLMV. Uh, I want to make sure to you all that uh, regulator in uh, CRMV and ASEAN community that are, have a cross cooperation. As a matter of fact, uh, our DP, uh, deputy SG, Kun uh, Sri Pa, she, she's been back from Lao PDR, and I myself went to the uh, Cambodia. I think that we very soon will announce something very positive. Just again, new opportunity come to you every day. <laughs> right she's that. leaving the bait with all of you guys, so <laughs> yeah, keep for, following for, her on. For the, the uh, technology thing, I want to make sure to you, now I'm asking my colleague to, get, to work together with the uh, security company and mutual fund company. Uh, we want to, as uh, Mr. Finance mentioned this morning, digital infrastructure, this is the key. Uh, we are working uh, very uh, together now. Uh, we want, as a SEC, uh, as I said, facilitator. We want to make sure that we will put up infrastructure for security company and also mutual fund company by using the DLT, the blockchain things. Uh, we are working uh, now and I think hopefully next month we would announce uh, a concept paper on this. And I would ask uh, some, uh, the, the board of commissioner to support because it needs some, some investment to do, you know. Perhaps it's going to be the first time that SEC will, will, will do on this, you know. But again, the landscape will change for sure. I just came back from Singapore last night. Uh, they're talking about future economy. I've been asking the lecturer that how would you see the financial landscape 
uh, especially the bank. Uh, lecturer, he is a, I'm not so sure, he's a senior minister, and he said that uh, for sure they may not need a bank, but they need a banking. Uh, a matter that how any, any, any business can uh, get access to customer will win the game, will win the game. I think that uh, I think that all the security committee, the stakeholders here, they are well aware of that. A matter that a uh, regulator need to accommodate. Uh, one thing that the latest uh, revision of the SEC Act uh, put in place be effective in la uh, this May already accommodate the digital uh, transformation and also the chain of technology already, and we accommodate our innovation. Just be sure that investor will protect it by make sure disclosure are there. You know, sometimes as you perhaps know that uh, the Thailand have the royal decree on digital asset. Uh, when I come, uh, I take to approach. One is about clinic. You know, anyone who want to apply uh, for the digital exchange or so on and so forth, or perhaps the ACO things, uh, we would accommodate, explain our requirement. Uh, and the other thing, uh, I found out that there's some scam on that too. Uh, so that I set a war room uh, to make sure that retail investor will be aware and then will protect it. Thank you. So I think it's what I'm taking away from this is that there is more of a uh, proactive approach as opposed to a reactionary approach from the regulators. And it's very encouraging to have that from both of you, to listen to that and you, to see that you are embracing I think that the theme itself says embracing new opportunities and uh, as opposed to reacting to uh, things happening as a problem era. So that's, that's very encouraging. And I think uh, what I also take away from Khun Ryunwadi's point is that from a regulator's lens, they are actually walking a very tight rope. They want to protect the investors and still they want to foster innovation. So uh, it's, it's really encouraging to see uh, how this is being shaped up and how uh, you are taking very proactive steps to address this. Uh, and thank you so much for your time. I think we are out of time already. So thanks a lot uh, for everyone for uh, uh, spending this uh, morning with us today.